to SPSS, uh, the coefficients for the linear analysis. I don't know why SPSS forces you to do this to get the extra information for the equality of variances not assumed f value and, and p value, but it does. Uh, and so what I have to do is I have to specify four different coefficients, one associated with each of my means. And they, these coefficients have to represent the trend in the data that I hypothesize to exist. Now this isn't a lecture on coefficients in linear uh, contrast testing or contrast testing in general. It's a little bit complicated, not insurmountably, but it would need a full lecture. And I'm just going to assume that um, you're going to look at another video that I'll upload in the future to find that, or you have another resource to, to do that. But I can tell you that for these data, where there's a linear trend going from higher means to lower means, I could use these coefficients. 3, 1, negative 1, and negative 3. Now, these coefficients are designed to represent the trend in the means. You can see that it's going from higher to a bit lower, a bit lower, and then lower. That's the trend in the means from low exposure all the way to high exposure to formulas. And there are rules to de devising these, and, and the main rule is that they have to sum to 0. So 3 plus 1 minus 1 minus 3, if you sum that together, that equals 0. And there are other rules too, but I won't go into too much detail. I'll do another video talking about that. But at the very least, this is going to represent my linear trend analysis. It's going to do exactly the same thing as this polynomial linear um, options that I did already, but it's going to give me the assumption of uh, homogeneity assumption not assumed um, p-value, which is what I want because I violated that assumption. So here is that extra table. SPSS gives me an extra table uh, with contrast tests. Here's the old, the other table that I got with the F1.97 for the linear term. That's the old one. P equal 0 .01, 0 0.010. Then SPSS gives me another table because I specified the coefficients myself. 3, 1, negative 1, negative 3. Uh, do not assume equal variances. I get a T. It's using the T distribution. T uh, 2.173 and it's still statistically significant. So even though I violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance, I've got the uh, do not assume equal variances and it's still statistically significant. So now um, I can interpret I can interpret it as a statistically significant trend or a linear term even though the high group has a very high standard deviation in comparison to the others. I've adjusted for that fact and it's statistically significant. Now uh, we get a t value uh, with this, so we could report um, the do not assume equal variances t uh, with 2.17 uh, uh, and degrees of freedom of 13. So that's where the adjustment comes into play. It's very significantly adjusted degrees of freedom. But we don't get something that's important in every type of analysis you do, uh, and when that's effect size. What is the effect size associated with this analysis? Whenever you do an analysis of variance, typically people report, or they should, report an eta squared. And you don't get that information in SPSS. You don't get it doing it the first way I did it for the linear term. There's no effect size there. And when I did the other way, to specify the coefficients myself, and uh, to um, get the effects. And something I'll point out is that when I specify the coefficients myself, it's exactly the same test as being performed in this table here. In fact, if you square the 2.683, you should get the uh, f value in there. Let me just do that for sure. Whoops. 2.683 times 2.683 equals 7.19, well, within rounding, 7.197. So when I square the t value, I get the f value. This value here is just the adjusted one. It's based on a t distribution. Again, why does SPSS do that? I have no idea. But that's what it does. It's the same test as this one, even though I specified the coefficients myself. Uh, OK, but I still don't have a measure of effect size. So how do we get a measure, an estimate of effect size? Because then we'll have it fully rounded. We'll have tested the linear contrast analysis. 
and we'll have adjusted for our, our, uh, our, our violation of the homogeneity of variance assumption, and then we'll also have an, uh, a um, measure of effect size.